sides, and you start hopping the front wheel around. You tighten the turn up, you bring the bike closer to whatever is at the exit of the turn. Okay? The nose wheel, if you drive in and you set the rear wheel over and achieve the same 90 degree difference, you're now a bike length farther from the obstacle, if you have room behind you to do it. So, when you're walking a section, bear in mind that you can significantly alter the position, your takeoff position, by which techniques you choose to use in the corner. You can pivot the bike in a circle by one front wheel hop, a matching rear wheel hop, and you can go around in a circle until you run out of gas or get dizzy and fall over. So, I use the two, and you can use the energy from one to transfer into the other one. So you can come into the corner, roll a little nose wheelie, when it lands, do a little front wheel hop, when the front wheel lands, do another little nose wheelie, and you don't have to put anywhere near as much energy into it as stopping and balancing and then getting around to trying to do the front wheel hop or the nose wheelie. But you following? I'm going with this. It's the, it's the combination PlayStation bonus point deal. If you can keep, keep the momentum of the hopping going and keep your balance, it is nowhere near as much energy. There's nothing worse than coming into a corner and then having to cold pan do a big nose wheelie. That ta that's, that's the most, that's the riskiest thing of, of all the, I'd prefer to do a flip turn before I want to do a big stationary nose wheelie. Because it's just really hard to get it to land and balance where you want it to land, even as long as I've been doing them. So, there's two nose wheelie techniques. I attribute one of them to the infamous Ryan Young. I call it the hip swing nose wheelie. It's, it's got its applications. I cannot take that away from it, but it's got a couple pitfalls as well. It's very, very useful when, when you're stationary. It's pretty much the only effective nose wheelie technique. It works. Um, it's quick. It's good for catching your balance. Its downsides are that the, the, you don't get a lot of height on your rear wheel lift, so the bike tends to drag off the ground and land while it's still moving sideways. It's more prone to a high side dab. Um, the other risk is people tend to bang a clutch out too hard trying to help the rear wheel off the ground, which is wrong, but they do it anyway, and it pushes the front wheel forward. You can push yourself past a tree or through a tape, or you can get yourself out of bounds by executing the technique wrong. So the way it's done is the bike stationary, you're in balance. You compress, you jump, and we're pushing around the front tire. Well, push it around the handlebars so that you're aiming to land to, to, to put your weight not into the fork but in front of them so that the bike will rotate. Okay? So I'm not pushing down the handlebars, I'm pushing forward and around the tire so it will lift the rear wheel. Okay? The front wheel might be turned a little bit. Always, you're pushing in the axis of the, the frame. You're pushing, if I got the front wheel turned, I'm not pushing around this way. I'm pushing over the top this way. Okay? Question so far. Try to resist the urge of adding the clutch thing in right now. Learn to do it without it. While you may get a little bit, you may get instant gratification on your concrete driveway with the clutch, You'll find when you're out in the mud, in the gravel, it's very, very easy to push the front wheel forward like I was talking about, and then you don't get anything that you want. It completely screws up the nose wheelie, and you're in deeper, you're in more crap than you were if you'd just done two small ones without the clutch. Okay? So once you can balance, you're standing on the bike. I'm not grabbing the bike with my legs to lift it. It lifts because I transfer the weight around the front wheel. Okay? I'm going to compress. I'm going to start pushing forward, I'm going to push my hips out, and I'm going to drag the rear wheel over with this side of the frame. It should look like this. On the compression cycle, release the rear brake. On the landing, apply the rear brake so that it doesn't slide backwards. Okay? However, you notice I, was, I still wasn't going to land in balance even on that one. The more smaller hops you do, the better. A few inches at a time is great. Okay? Question now that you've seen it. God, there's a lot of work for you. I 
stir it with a basic turn. Come into the corner. This one, this one works. There's the advantages to this one are it's got a much straighter lift off and landing, so you can lift the reveal over stuff better and land it. It's landing vertically. If you've got more time, you have to put less energy into it. The downsides are it takes a little bit of planning. It requires the bike to roll forward just noticeably to do, and you have to be able to do a basic turn first, and for some people that's technically challenging. So. It started completely differently. You start, you roll in, you're doing a basic turn, the motorcycle's lean, you're making the turn, and then you decide that this is where I'm going to do the nose wheel. Compress. As you apply the front brake, stand the bike up. It will swing on the steering head because of the steering geometry. So I compress and I stand the bike up, and the rear wheel swings because of the steering geometry. Okay, I didn't push it over there with my hips. I come up and I just follow it over there and land. Questions, comments? I'll do a couple and then you guys can much higher lift than the other technique, the bike drops in, it's easier to land. It's more complicated to set up, but it's got its advantages. 